Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sapnuski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. Welcome to Maluma Fusion Masterclass. In this series of videos that is going to be designated on one playlist on my channel, I am going to go over Luma Fusion from A to Z. And when I say A to Z, I mean every single thing that you could possibly want to know from the very beginning of getting your footage either off of a different device or from an SD card onto your iPad and how to get it into Luma Fusion. We're going to go over the whole entire interface. We're going to do some editing, some color correction, some color grading, doing transitions, everything. I'm going to break this masterclass up into segments because perhaps there's things that you're not interested in learning or that you already know. This way you don't have to sit through it again. You can skip to the next video. Now you may notice that I'm working with a couple of different accessories. I'm going to leave links for everything down in the description. If you're interested in purchasing those accessories, they are my affiliate links. So if you do use those links, I thank you. Okay, so let's jump into part one, getting your footage from an SD card or off of a different device if you're not cloud sharing. Here we are at our basic jumping off point. We want to edit things in LumaFusion off of the photo roll. So either we can upload our footage from an SD card that we have gotten out of a camera or we can share it from another device. Let's say you've used your phone to film some things, but to edit it, you'd like it to be on something larger like an iPad. So all we would have to do to get your footage off your phone into your iPad, if you don't have cloud sharing, you can just select the files that you wanna use by hitting the select button up in the corner and choose the files that you want to transfer over to your iPad. The box with an arrow, that's the share button. You wanna hit that and choose what device you want to send it to. It should automatically register your closest iOS device. So choose the iPad. As you can see, it says downloading. Depending on the length of the clip, it could take anywhere from just a few seconds to a little longer. Just be patient. Once it goes through, you're going to hear a little notification and boom, it should pop up on your iPad. You don't have to get it directly from a phone. You could get it from another iPad and that's how you share between devices. Now let's say you've filmed something with a camera and you need to get your footage off your SD card. I recommend using these SD card storage wallets. It just keeps them safe and secure and they're waterproof. So if anything ever happens to it, falls into the water, they're safe. So let me take out the SD card that my footage is on. I have one of the newer iPads that has a USB-C port. In order to transfer data from an SD card onto your iPad, you're going to need an associated dongle with that iPad. As I mentioned, this one is a USB-C, so my dongle has a USB-C. If you have a lightning port, you need to get a dongle like this that has a lightning adapter. And as I mentioned, I'm going to leave links for everything down in the description. If you have a type of protective cover on your iPad, you may have to remove it in order to work with that dongle. Okay, so step one is putting the SD card into the correct slot in your dongle. Make sure it's facing the right way and that it's all the way in. And then you plug in the dongle into your iPad and you'll notice a little blue icon that has popped up. I'm just going to tap that. Now I'm going to open the photo roll. On the side here, you can see where it says devices untitled. That is the dongle with the SD card. So we are going to tap that. And this is all of the footage that's on that SD card. Now you can individually select the clips that you want to import, or you can hit select. It will select them all, and then you hit the import button. Once it's completed downloading your footage, you're going to get this notification. Do you want to delete the clips or do you want to keep them on the SD card? I always delete mine because it's automatically saving that to your photo roll and cleaning out the SD card. So let's just go over to the library and there's all the clips I just downloaded. So now I'm going to remove that dongle and take out the SD card. Just be mindful to be fragile with this side of the SD card. And I'm immediately going to tuck that back into my SD card wallet so that I don't lose it. 
Now, not all SD cards are created equal. As you can see, one says 128 gigabytes and the other one says 32 gigabytes. And believe it or not, the one that says 32 gigabytes was more expensive than the 128. And it all has to do with the read and write speeds. This one that's 128 gigabytes writes at about 100 megabits a second, which is still fast. But this one that's 32 writes at about 285 megabits a second. So it's going to upload your footage much faster. Depending on how much footage you think you're going to be capturing with your camera and what quality. If you're just filming at 1080p, you're going to have a lot of room if you have a card that's 128 gig. And if you're filming in 4K, you can expect that your footage is going to consume one gigabyte for each minute.